Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma bada habita fillah. Ya ahli iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas with the bad ala sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Because in this time, we live in a time of great fitna, trials and tribulations. Everything from the spread of the most wicked of uh, types of sin and the accessibility for people to that sin, meaning zina, meaning that you can have a home that's righteous, but in the back room, your children can be watching the most foul of things and be exposed to the most evil of things. And likewise, the shubahat, as Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, about the two ways the shaitan comes to you, and that is through shubahat and shahwat. Shubahat meaning the doubtful issues, like things that will destroy your aqidah, your creed. And don't think by buying books and uh, just simply uh, reading or simply just believing that that's going to defend you. That it's a constant process because our iman fluctuates. Iman rises and sometimes it's low. So you need the tools in order to protect yourself and in order to adhere to the book and the sunnah. Because the only way you can adhere to the Quran and the sunnah to defend against the shubahat, the doubtful issues, is by knowledge, is by seeking Islamic knowledge, so that way you know the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you know the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those are the tools, that is the weapons, those are the weapons to protect you from doubtful things. And the second thing that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned with regards to the way the shaitan comes to you is through the shahwat. And this refers to uh, our desires, meaning our base desires, uh, sexual and other things. That could be anything from pornography to masturbation to zina, uh, adultery, fornication, from swapping, from all of the different things and different ways that we're challenged, homosexuality, lesbianism, all of these things, all of these are various ways of shahwat that the shaitan comes to us and comes to distort us and take us away from the saratullahi al-mustaqim. And if we listen and follow the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his prophetic advice, and the means that he gave us to defend ourselves against these things, then at least we have hope to protect ourselves from the hellfire because it also depends on our implementation of that prophetic advice and commands. The Prophet والسلام, said, Min hadith Zayd ibn Arqam, radiallahu ta'anhu, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqal, ala wa inni Tarikum fikum thakalain. Adum kitab Allah, kitab Allah, Azza wa Jal. Who a humble Allah. Men a tether who can a la huda. Women taraku who can a la dolal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Hadith Wa Hassanahu Imam al Albani that in the Hadith of Zayd ibn Arqam. Anhu, that the Prophet وسلم, said, Verily, I have left you with two things. I've left you with two things. And he said, thakhalain. You know, these are two heavy things. If we want to literally translate, that these are thakhalain. These are these have immense weight. And then he said, he said, Ahaduhuma. He said, one of them is the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Quran. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is the rope of Allah. And whoever uh, follows it or holds on to it, then they are on guidance. And whoever leaves it, then they're on misguidance. So this ahabat al is an encouragement for us, firstly, to adhere to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, it's an encouragement or it is a command or what we understand from this is that we must know the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means we should read the Qur'an, we should contemplate the Qur'an, and let it work in our lives. Because if we just have the Qur'an on our shelf, 
and we don't dust it off, and we don't put it in our hands, or we don't have it in our heart, meaning that we've memorized it, then we, we don't know what is contained therein, nor can we practice it. So it's imperative that we use the Qur'an as uh, the tool, as the weapon, as the means for dealing with all of our ailments in life. It is the source for helping us to heal ourselves, to heal ourselves from mental and spiritual and physical uh, ailments. It's the Qur'an. It's the Kitabillah. Hablillah. In the hadith of Abi Shuray al Khazai, رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أبشروا أبشروا أليس تشهدون أن لا إله إلا الله وأني رسول الله قالوا نعم قال فإن هذا القرآن سبب طرفه بيد الله وطرفه بأيديكم فتمسكوا به فإنكم لن تضلوا ولن تهلكوا بعده أبدا The Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said رواه ابن أبي شيبة in his book المصنف he said uh, that in the hadith of Shuray al-Khaza'i, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, you know, he gave glad tidings. He gave glad tidings twice. Abshiru, abshiru. He said, don't you bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that I am, uh, and that I am the messenger of Allah? They said, Naam. They said, yes. He then said, Verily, this Qur'an is the, uh, is, uh, is the, the, the reason and that a portion of it is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a portion, a portion of it is uh, in, your, uh, in your hands. You know, it's with you. So adhere to it, فتمسكوبي. for verily you will not be misguided, nor will you be destroyed uh, if you do so, ever. So meaning that your safety, your guidance, your protection from destruction, and that destruction we mentioned in two types, it can come through Shubahat and Shahwat. It comes with the Quran. It comes by adhering to the Quran. It comes by being a believer. It comes by adhering to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. al Mu'minun. This is really an admonishment, first and foremost, for myself and then my brothers and sisters in Islam to return to the Qur'an, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah azza wa jal, in order to understand your religion and in order to have a remedy for the various social ills that we experience and experience throughout the world. And that the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives you a means and prescription for those remedies on how to deal with things in general and in specific. Some things may be outside of your, your bounds or outside of your means for dealing with directly. For example, recently with the what's going on, the instability, the political instability, for example, in Libya or in Yemen or in many places. But what does the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us? How do we deal with the the suffering of our brothers and sisters in these various places around the world, the Rohingya, uh, their suffering, and the world turning a blind eye, and the continual oppression, the oppression of our brothers and sisters in Philistine, that these, these, these things can, can overcome you and overwhelm you. And you as a believer should be concerned about these things. We should be concerned about oppression wherever it is, whether it be 
the indiscriminate killing of minorities in America, whether it be the hunting down of black men in America, whether it be the enslavement of Africans and migrants in Libya being sold like chattel slavery, as was done to many of our ancestors in the past in the Atlantic slave trade. We should be concerned with that because Islam forbids oppression. Islam forbids tyranny. But you need the tools to be able to deal with that. And that comes from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So at least, the least that you can do that when you see this oppression, when you see tyranny, when you see wickedness that is encompassing you and surrounding you in your environment, at the least minimal thing you can do is supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is contained in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's contained in the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Our Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr, Allah ta'ala, he mentioned, he said about this, the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the Quran. He said, wahablu, wahablu Mamdud, قَدْ أَنزَلَهُ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى هِدَايَةٍ لِلْبَشَرِ وَصَلَاحٍ لِلنَّاسِ وَذِكْرَ, وذكر, وذكر لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَشَفَاءٍ لِمَا فِي صُدُورٍ وَذِيَاءٍ وَنُورٍ وَبَرَكَةٍ لِمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِهِ قال الله تعالى كتاب أنزل, أنزلناه إليك مباركا لِيَتَّدَبُّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَّذَكَّرَ أُولَلَ الْبَابِ The Shaykh mentions, and we'll end with this, this beautiful prescription from our Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala. He said, and this Hubble, and the Hubble, we're talking about the Hubble Allah, as Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, وَاتَّسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَكُوا Hold on, all of you fast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. And some of the Salaf said that the Hablillah is the Jama'ah. Some of them said it's the Qur'an. Some of them say that it's the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And all of those meanings are, uh, are, are correct in their generality. That it's from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. It's from Islam. And it's from being with the main body of Muslims. Because we have other evidences from the Book of Allah and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to illustrate for us. But the Shaykh said here, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he said that this habl mamdu, this hanging, this rope that hangs down, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it descended from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, it was revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. He said as a, as guidance for, uh, for, for people or for mankind and as a means for rectifying a people, it rectifies you, it rectifies your problem, problem and it rectifies yourself. So that's a double rectification. When you rectify the ailments in a society, that's one thing. You know, it gives you guidance. It's a source of guidance, the, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it rectifies problems. And it's also a rectification of yourself when you are practicing it, as we'll get to what the Sheikh said. And he said, وَذِكْرَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And it's a reminder for the believers. And it is a cure for the hearts. It's a cure for what is contained in the hearts because sickness comes to the hearts. We have heart sickness. We have heart sickness physically, but we also get, of course, the sickness and the ailments of weak iman and being having our creed distorted, distorted by the things that we read, distorted by the things that we hear, distorted by the things that we intake and that we watch. All of these can corrupt your aqidah. All of these can affect your creed. So that's why we have to be careful and always go back to the book and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because that's a dhikra lil mu'mineen. And he said that there's a cure for the hearts or cure for what's in the chest. And it is light. And it is, uh, it's, it, it's light. Okay, whether that be the light of the sun or the light of the moon, moonlight. And it is uh, baraka. It's contained in its blessing. So you will be rewarded from reading the Quran and adhering to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You receive ajr from Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he said, وَبَارَكَةً لِمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِهِ 
He said that it is a blessing for those who are from its people. Who? Which people? The people who read the Quran and try to practice the Quran. He said, and then he mentioned the ayat. He said, Qala Allahu Ta'ala. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakat. The book, or a book, which we reveal to him, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we revealed it, sorry, we revealed it uh, to you, ilayka, to, to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Quran, mubarakun. It, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 it gives blessings. It's a blessed uh, revelation. And it gives blessings. And this is for the people to contemplate its verses. So we have to contemplate the Quran. And it is a reminder to the people of knowledge. Because those people, the people who possess knowledge, the possess fiqh fi deen, possess ilm, possess basira, insight, possess uh, hikmah, wisdom, that these people, it's a reminder. So it's a reminder for those who read the Quran and those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has favored to be from Ahl Quran, wa Ahl Sunnah, and to be of those who contemplate Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's signs and verses, and use that to make judgments in their life, and use what is contained in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to rectify their affairs. So that's our healing. That's our spiritual healing, and that is our political healing, and that is our social healing for the ills that we uh, have in our lives. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us to be from Ahl Quran and Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.